What have these people done to yoga? Thousands of years ago, Patanjali described Hatha Yoga and Krishna described the basics of the entire yoga system. Both of these teachers required practitioners and yoga teachers to embrace, among other things, austerity, simplicity, celibacy, and renunciation of worldliness. Yogis lived in the forest or the mountains, they ate what grew wild, shunned the world, and abandoned worldly trappings for a higher cause, for enlightenment. Fast forward to 2018, and yoga is now a market worth $80 billion globally. Students pay 15 a session, teacher training costs thousands, and yoga retreats are through the roof. Added to that are requisite yoga equipment, yoga mats, yoga pants, yoga shirts, and yoga incense, and the varieties of yoga are as numerous as they are embarrassing. Naked yoga, hot yoga, dream yoga, beer yoga, sex yoga, and even laughing yoga. But it's no laughing matter. Yoga marketing has gotten the upper hand on the purpose of yoga, and that purpose was not combating stress, keeping healthy, or feeling good what to speak of making money or a livelihood. The purpose of yoga was self-realization and connecting with the Supreme. So let's be honest. Let's stop calling this commercialized farce yoga. Call it whatever you want, but don't piggyback on the dignity of great yogis, teachers, and avatars of the past. If you want to make a business or be part of a business, then just know that you have sold your soul to the very thing yoga is meant to free you from worldliness and bodily identification. But if you want to really practice yoga, then do it the authorized way, the way of the Yoga Sutras and the Bhagavad Gita.